I'm Jason Gilbo here at Fantasy Football Cafe, taking a look at a very interesting group here today, the Carolina Panthers. One of these teams that kind of draw the look of either fantasy pretenders or, you know, are going to have some nice value here. Uh, I believe it's going to be a make or break season for a lot of fantasy teams that draft and invest in the Carolina Panthers. Um, just you, got, you have Jonathan Stewart with his injury issues and as well as some nice touchdown vultures taken away from him. Um, also, you got Cam Newton, who's been kind of trending downwards, both in, in the passing game and in the run game, which is a little concerning for where he is ranked at. Um, so let's talk about Cam Newton real quick. Um, like I said, been trending down the passing yards since coming into the season. Each year, he's gone down, just threw for a little over 3,000 yards, and uh, finished below a lot of a lot of poor quarterbacks, Brian Hoyer, uh, Derek Carr. Not that Derek Carr is a, a poor quarterback, but last season going into his first year, you would think Cam Newton would overthrow guys like him and Alex Smith, too. Um, as well as just 18 passing touchdowns, another poor number from Newton. Um, you know, but the rushing game made up for it, you know, most weeks. Um, but overall, I mean, he was very inconsistent. Um, yeah, you would put up some monster weeks, and then he would have some just absolutely awful weeks that would cause you to just lose your matchups. Um, I'm not really, I, I like a little consistency with my quarterbacks, and Cam Newton is, is anything but that. 58.5% um, completion percentage was near many first-year quarterbacks last season, Blake Bortles, even Geno Smith. Um, it just the week-to-week -week ins inconsistency is my big knock against him for being a top-8 fantasy quarterback. Is he going to likely be a top-8, top-10 quarterback at the end of the year? Yeah, probably. Um, but going from week-to-week, -week, you couldn't really tell. His targets around him, really big body wide receivers and tight ends, Kelvin Benjamin, um, Greg Olson, and newly drafted uh, Devin Fun Funches. So to make, to, make, uh, to make him successful, I mean, yeah, he's got some big body wide receivers, but still mechanics and accuracy are an issue. Um, I mean, looking ahead here at uh, at his wide receivers, um, his he's got a nice established tight end, Greg Golson, who's put up some nice numbers. Um, last three seasons, he's totaled up t uh, 17 touchdowns, crossed over 1,000 yards last season, 800 yards over the previous two seasons there. Uh, adding Funches is going to take a small amount of targets away from Olsen, but I, I'm pretty sure the, the 800 yards could see him in the sevens. Uh, six touchdowns will, will be there again from Olsen. But I'm not going to draft him high as, and really go for him as a tight end this season because the upside isn't really there. Um, moving on to Calvin Benjamin, uh, one of the really solid rookie wide receivers to have a nice solid fantasy season last season. Nine touchdowns, um, got a lot of targets, got over 1,000 yards. Um, second most dropped balls in the NFL, still an issue. Um, and Funchess is one of the same guys who has the same problems with dropping the ball. And um, coming into the season, the hype train's kind of kind of hitting Benjamin a little bit, uh, a little bit there. I'm not really seeing the upside with him. Likely going to stay within 900 yards, six touchdowns or so. Um, just with with you know Newton being what he is, um, it's hard to lot uh, hard to like a lot of upside there. So. With the wide receiver out of Michigan, Funches, big-bodied hybrid wide receiver slash tight end, whatever you want to call him, um, going to play wide receiver. Big major work in progress. Raw talent. Um, not sure if he's going to put it all together this season right away, especially with Newton not being good enough to really make his wide receivers tremendously better as the season goes on. That's an issue for me. I'm not really reaching for him in drafts. Um, I mean, maybe within the last few picks you take a risk on him. Overall, nothing more than that. Looking ahead at the, the running back, Jonathan Stewart is going to finally get the ball for the first time and be a premier back. Um, the big downside to him, Mike Tolbert, Cam Newton are TD vultures in the red zone. Um, and they're going to take away a lot of touchdowns from Stewart. If Stewart's not busting him in for 30 yards out, uh, he's not going to get a lot of red zone touchdowns. So that's an issue for me. Um, as long as he stays healthy, which is an issue, 1,000 yards, 4 to 5 touchdowns is probably where he's going to be. I do like him as a nice RB2, um, just given given the depth of running backs coming in year in, year out. Um, it's nice to have maybe a 1,000-yard, five-touchdown guy as your, as your RB2 there. I mean, so the Panther, Panthers sum things up, lacking some upside um, from their skill position guys. Defense may be solid again this year. Um, like a couple of teams, their core really depends on the quarterback play. 
And I just think for the ADP of Benjamin Newton, it's a little high for me to really like him. Olsen in a non-sexy position. Um, I really still rank Gronkowski, um, Graham there, still at way ahead of him. If I'm going to go up for a wide receiver or go up for a tight end, and then you're throwing Travis Kelsey into the mix this season. Stewart, nice, has some risk, but you can't really knock him for being a solid running back. Um, he's shown what he can do, especially over the latter half of this season. So, a uh, little bit from the Panthers to like there, but still, ADP has me feeding away from a lot of them.